How to cloak images with forks. Facial recognition search engines, artificial intelligence, facial recognition models and systems are becoming more sophisticated as the years go by. PimEyes, a face search engine, is one of the most concerning tools, as it is accessible to anyone. For example, a complete stranger could request to take a selfie with you, which at the time you may have thought was innocent enough, and you comply with their request. However, if you have an online presence, that selfie could then be uploaded to PimEyes and used to find personal identifiable information about you within seconds of taking that photo. If this concerns you, the Sand Lab at University of Chicago has developed Forks. Forks is an algorithmic software tool that performs image cloaking for personal privacy on your local computer. Forks performs the cloaking process by taking your personal images and making tiny pixel level changes. These cloaked images can then be used as you normally would, such as sharing them on social media or sending them to family and friends. If you want to know more about Forks and its limitations, check out my video description below. To cloak your images, the first thing you need to do is open up your browser and navigate to the following URL address. This URL address will be in the video description below. Once you're here, you'll be on the Forks homepage. Scroll down until you see where it says Downloads and Source Code. The current version of Forks at the time of recording of this video is version 1.0. To download Forks, you have two options. You have a Mac download on the left hand side and on the right hand side, you have the Forks download for Windows. I'm on a Windows 11 computer, so I'm going to be downloading the Windows version. To do this, simply click on the download button for Windows. Forks will then begin to download directly to your downloads folder. If you're on Google Chrome like myself, Forks will begin downloading immediately to your downloads folder. The Windows download for Forks is quite large. It's just under 600 megabytes. So I'll be back with you guys once the Forks download has completed. All right guys, I'm back. The Forks download has now completed. Now what I'm going to do is open up the download location of the forks.exe. To do this, I'm just going to navigate to the bottom left-hand corner of my browser, click on the arrow next to my download, and then click on show in folder. I'll now be able to see where the forks.exe is located. I'm going to move forks to my desktop. To do this, I'm just going to close out of my browser now as I no longer need it. I'm going to click on forks and I'm going to drag it to my desktop. And now I'm going to close out of my downloads folder. Great, so we've got the Forks program here. All we need now for this video demonstration is an image to cloak. On my desktop, I have a portrait photo of a very famous person you might recognize. I'm just going to double click on it now to open it in my photo viewer so you can see exactly what the portrait photo looks like before we cloak it using the Forks program. Now that I've previewed the image for you, I'm just going to close out of it now. To cloak the image, double click on the Forks program that you just downloaded to launch Forks. Once you've done that, Forks will open in a very small window. You have two buttons. The first button here allows you to select the image or images that you'd like to cloak. And underneath that, there's a button to run the protection, which of course will cloak your images. So the first thing we need to do is click on select images and find the image that we would like to cloak. Of course, guys, for me, it's the image on my desktop. Click on it to select it. If you have multiple images that you'd like to cloak, you can select them all and then simply click on open. In the Forks program, you should now see a small piece of text which says selected one images, click run protection. If you had two images selected, it would say two images. Once you've selected all your images, all that's left to do is click on run protection. Underneath it gives you an ETA of how long it will take for Forks to cloak your image. Because I'm only cloaking one image, Forks has given me an ETA of one minute. So I'll be back with you guys once our selected image has been cloaked by Forks. All right guys, I'm back. And as you can see, there's a new image on my desktop, which has been generated by Forks with the same name as my selected image, but with some addition to it. So as you can see, it has an underscore low underscore cloaked added to it to help you not get the original image and the cloaked image mixed up. Once you're done with the Forks program, just click on the X to close it. And now I'm just going to move the cloaked image to the right of the original image. In the thumbnails of the image, you can't really tell the difference, but if I double click on the image to open it and view it in a photo viewer, we'll get a better idea idea of the difference between the cloaked image and the original image. The current photo that we're viewing is the cloaked image. So you can see that at the top left. And if I use my arrow keys to navigate to the next image, this in fact is the original image. So if we look
look at the top left hand corner, we can see our original image's name. But if I go forward and back between the cloaked image and my original image, there's definitely some differences between the original and the cloaked image. There are very subtle changes, which you wouldn't be able to tell if you didn't have the original image. If we look closely at the image, you can see there's definitely some changes here, changes around the eyes, changes around the nose, and around the cheeks and the upper lip area. They are very subtle, but enough to distort future facial recognition models, which may be built using your likeness. Again, guys, there are some limitations to forks, and if you're interested in finding out about these limitations, check out the video description below for more information. All right, guys, so that pretty much concludes the video on how to cloak images with forks. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, comment down below, and most importantly of all, subscribe to support the channel. I'll see you on the next video. Why is it so hard to let it go?